All right, welcome back. Uh, today we are looking at Nandipa Mtambo as a South African contemporary artist. I'm not going to go too in-depth in many of her works. I'd like to focus on one. Uh, Mtambo was born in 1982 in Swaziland. She graduated from Michaela School of Fine Arts in 2007 with the distinction. Jane Alexander was her study leader and this becomes apparent in her creation of hybrid forms. She currently resides in Johannesburg and when she was younger she wanted to be a forensic detective and her love of biological matter infiltrates into her artistic uh, practice. Mtambo won the Standard Bank Young Artist Award in 2011 and has since exhibited her work all over the world. Notable exhibitions include the 56th Venice Biennale in 2015, her exhibitions at the Seattle Art Museum and Brooklyn Art Museum in New York and more recently her exhibition at the Tel Aviv Museum of Art. Her themes deal with body politics, cultural stereotypes, absence versus presence, and gender, specifically androgyny, as she says that she was often confused for a boy when growing up. If we look at the work titled, let's get it, and from 2009, here Mtambo has used cowhide, resin, polyester mesh and waxed cord. This artwork titled Imabutfo or Power or Armies shows 24 suspended figures made from cowhide. She created these by getting the raw hide from a taxidermist, then stretching them, curing them, cleaning them and molding, their, molding them onto her own body and that of her mother. She injected them with resin to keep the form. Many readings can be made from this work, one common one being that it refers to Labola, the African tradition of paying for a wife with cattle. This act would prove to the father of the bride that the prospective husband is grateful to him for having raised a woman of worth. Although Ntambo does not refute this analysis, she does claim to have been brought up in a family where Labola would not be a consideration were she to get married. So although we could say that a semiotic reading of the work could compare these garments to African wedding dresses or a woman's worth in Africa, this was not intentional. Mtambo did, however, believe that having hair as a female made her less attractive, and thus she played with the idea of having a body covered in hair to question attraction. Mtambo says that she decided to use cowhide as a means to subvert expected associations with corporeal presence, femininity, sexuality and vulnerability. She compares the folds of the fur to a woman's dress whilst dancing the paso doble, a Spanish dance that emulates bullfighting. In this dance, the woman usually wears red and acts as the matador's muleta, the stick that he waves. Her interest in bullfighting and Greek mythology merge with African stereotypes and customs to create a work that speaks on so many levels. The work becomes a metaphorical collage where the viewer pastes his or her own interpretations on top of numerous previous readings. In this piece, the abject becomes an object again, and often this object is better digested when we see it when seen from the surface side where we see the fur, as opposed to the side that used to be in direct contact with the cow's innards. So much like artists like Damien Hirst who use um, taxidermied animals, Mtambo is dealing with the abject. The abject is that which society would normally throw away. It's not an object, it's not a subject. It kind of grosses us out, but it brings a morbid curiosity. This in turn makes us question the absence in the work. The absence of the rest of the cow, as well as the absence of the figure that was used to form the mould. Mtambo says that she has never lived on a farm, and her choice for this medium was based on the fact that she knew that she wanted to sculpt, but she was battling to find a medium, until she had a dream about cows. In this sense, the work could be a new age form of surrealism, where the subconscious dream world informs the artistic process. This, all cows could form part of the collective unconscious in a place such as Africa, where these animals are held in such high regard. I'd just like to quickly look at another work by Mtambo, and it's called Europa from 2008. It's an archival print um, on cotton rag paper. In this image, we see Mtambo turn herself into an aggressive looking minotaur or human hybrid. She faces the viewer directly with eyes of defiance. It seems as though she has completely merged herself with this beast and as such has harnessed the primal strength of the creature. The binaries evident here are male versus female, animal versus human, and attraction versus repulsion. 
In this work, Ntambo questions the manner in which black females have been portrayed in art. She uses the Minotaur as Picasso had used it in his work to affirm masculine, masculinist heterosexuality. We can see this in the work by Picasso called Guernica. She also elicits a sense of fear and desire, much like the exotic other that we see in traditional paintings where black maidservants were included in classical paintings to add a sense of primal sexuality and otherness. So Ntambo often embraces the idea of Western art and how we, not only art, mainly literature, and how we've come to, to normalize it in our storytelling, yet she adds a very African iconology and African way of viewing these stories. And so by merging herself with these typical Greek myths, she's almost retelling the story, deconstructing the story in a sense. Hope you enjoy.